वेलकम टू एम्बेडेड सिस्टम लेक्चर सीरीज आई प्रोफेसर रितेश धोलकिया इज गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू टाइप्स ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर यूज इन एम्बेडेड सिस्टम सो दिस वीडियो इज क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग वेर आई एल एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ वी यूज डिफरेंट सॉफ्टवेयर विद एम्बेडेड सिस्टम सो लेट एस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस फर्स्ट बाय सॉफ्टवेयर फॉर फाइनल मशीन इंप्लीमेंटेशन नाउ हियर See what is final machine implementation first. See final machine is embedded system, and in embedded system we have ROM memory, and this ROM memory is having well defined program loaded inside. Based on that, our embedded system will work. But when it comes to final machine implementation, it is not only about program. There are many other things which is there inside of that ROM image. That is what the case which we are dealing with to see step by step. So let us see it one by one. See here we have a ROM memory. You see, and with this ROM memory here, first we have program counter address register. That is to indicate address of next instruction. to be executed for given program and with that we can have two bytes for addresses from where system starts execution on power up right but it is not required in 8086 microprocessor and in 80196 microprocessor as well as it is not required in 8051 microcontroller in short one should know program counter indicates address of next instruction now next address register is stack pointer where it will be indicating top of the stack and it is what two byte address of stack on the reset that one can say now we will see how different other address registers are there so you see i have defined address register 1 to address register 10 it is not fixed here just for a sake of example i have written address 1 to address 10 there can be many address registers that is based on complexity of system which we have now here all these address registers that is there for different task in general we can say there are three different types of task which is there with us one is interrupt service routine second is boot up load program and third is machine code program right so interrupt service routines that is having interrupt service routine addresses here you see i have assigned address register 1 2 3 with interrupt service routine vector right and that is having address over here and that is what having particular location from where we can have particular interrupt service right after that we have boot up program code over here that is our second agenda and with all this interrupt service routine we have well defined program written at different addresses for example address 1 is interrupt service routine 1 then with address 1 there is a code written for that interrupt service right for example address 2 that is there for interrupt service routine there with their address will be having well defined code written over here and here we have boot up program codes which i have mentioned right that is what will be executing when we turn on the system and here i have defined this memory space for machine specific codes that is there for a program that may be there for interrupt service routine or it may be there for different task as well as we can have this machine code for real time operating system right so in general if you observe this rom data then there are different types of data interrupt service routine boot up program and machine codes which is there with different program right and 
at last one can say this is what final stage software and that is referred as ROM image. So once we have final stage we can load that in ROM and we can function that program with our embedded system right. Now to have that final ROM image how many ways are there that is what we will be observing one by one. So let me tell you first there are basically three ways. One is directly we can program our ROM by machine code. Second is we can program our ROM by assembly language. And third is we can program our ROM by higher level language. In machine code, we have well defined codes for particular machine which we can directly load it with well defined address byte wise and bit wise in assembly language programming first we'll be writing program in assembly language and after that with the help of linker locator and loader we'll be loading that in rom in higher level language we'll be programming in higher language higher level language like c c plus plus java and then with the help of linker and assembler will be translating that into machine code and then with the help of loader will be loading it in ROM image. Right. So there are three ways by which we can program ROM. Let us see first one that is by having machine codes. So software for coding in machine code. So when we program our memory with machine code programmer will define the address of each bytes or bits. It is used for specific physical devices or subsystem. For example, trans receiver and in trans receiver first we'll be making machine code byte wise and bits wise. And then we will be configuring it to transmit with well defined speed in KBPS, MBPS, GBPS using specific bus and networking protocol. Here programmer must understand processor instruction set Hence, machine code implementation is time consuming. So here, by programming with machine code, programmer should have knowledge of machine code means instruction set. And then only programmer can load that machine code directly into ROM structure, right? So this is one way by which we can train our ROM memory. Now, second way to train our ROM memory is by having assembly language programming. So software for processor specific assembly language. Here also we'll be writing codes in assembly language, right? But it is not directly machine code. Remember this. And it requires understanding of processor as well as instruction set. Assembly language is useful for configuring physical devices and to configure physical devices will be using input output ports will be using analog to digital converter digital to analog converter right so there are many things which we are dealing with to configure and for that programmer should have knowledge of instruction set of assembly language with given system here we can configure all those physical devices from the ports using ADC, DAC and line display interface. At last, there will be a conversion process of assembly to ROM image. Now I'll explain you how we can have a conversion process from assembly to ROM image. So to have that conversion, first we'll be having assembly language program, right? And that assembly language program is getting translated into machine code by using assembler. So assembler will convert given assembly language program into machine code, but it is having different addresses. Now here we'll be having a library and in this library, there will be well defined codes, right? So what we do is we'll be having a linker 
that linker will link this library with machine code and it will reallocate addresses of this machine code right and at last we'll be having a machine code with well defined addresses right so here there will be reallocation of addresses and we'll be having a machine code in sequence with well defined addresses and after that we'll be having a rom programmer where we will be loading this code byte by byte using loader and here we'll be having rom memory in which there will be locator which will locate code in sequence so locator will locate codes as rom image and it will be storing permanently in rom and it locates input output task and hardware device driver codes at unchanged address right so you see when we have assembly language program what we do we write program in assembly language like mo a comma b this type of instructions that you might have studied with 8085 right with processor controller you have done that programming in assembly language once you write that assembly language program there will be assembler you see that will translate that assembly language program into machine code so that will be hex data now we have a library of machine code and linker will link that library with machine code and it will reallocate addresses so now there will be reallocation of addresses with given machine code and that machine code now we will be burning by loader byte by byte and locator will locate that code in rom image see this is how complete rom image is getting formed from assembly language program right now let us try to understand software for higher level language now see as i have told you we can train our rom image by higher level language even higher level language means we can have a language in c c plus plus java the reason is every time we cannot train our brain with different instruction set of different processors so all we do is we try to learn one language by which we can program different processors right so higher level language is used so higher level language is c c plus plus java python so by which we can train different embedded system so different programming layers are available with higher level language let us see those layers one by one so first layer is preprocessor command in that we use it to create symbolic constant in c right the reason is in c language we have well defined uh, syntaxes now how to convert those syntaxes into machine code for that initially there has to have creation of symbolic constant right so that is what preprocessor command after that secondly we have a main function see main function will get automatically called during loading a program file so when you load a program file this main function will get called automatically next is interrupt service routine it is specially designed for interrupts the reason is see every time we cannot write program for different interrupt service routine right so there is well defined interrupt service routine uh, header files which is inside of this higher level language right and that is specially designed for servicing different interrupt after that we perform different task then we have kernel and scheduler it is used to manage communication between software and hardware and it decide what to do next right 
so kernel and scheduler is there which will be communicating in between hardware and software and at last we have standard library functions including network protocol and function for sending stack and receiving stack so these are the prototypes which is used with specific header files so that is how higher level language is there and at last there will be a conversion process of C program into ROM image. Right. So C language is having different layers. Once we write our program, at last we'll be translating that C program into ROM image and then we can have a program installed in given embedded system. So let us try to understand how we can load that C program in ROM image. So here we have a C program. First, we will be translating that into object file of machine code using compiler. Right. It generates object file, which is having a data of machine code. And here we have a library of machine code. Obviously, this library of machine code will get link by linker with this machine code. Right. So once you link this, will be having reallocation of addresses and we will be optimizing our code, right? So here one can say code optimizer or reallocation of memory that is happening and we will be having a machine code over here, right? And this code optimizer that will improve quality of code and efficiency. Efficiency means it will be reducing length of the code. And after that, we'll be having a locator which will locate this machine code in ROM memory, right? So locator and linker that will be installing this machine code in ROM memory, right? So this is how C, C++, Java types of higher level language is getting translated into ROM image for embedded system.